this we this is the way we provide dignity and That's respect terrible. the privacy terrible. of uh, an individual who has lost her life as yeah. a young doctor. Yes. But apart from that, uh, Mrs. Sibal, I'm happy that you are here for the state of uh, West Bengal. Couple of uh, important, why couple? Quite a few uh, aspects of the of the sure. way the matter proceeded. It appears that the crime was detected in the early hours of the morning. Yes, yes. No, indeed. After the crime was detected in the early hours of the morning, the principal of the hospital tries to pass this off as a suicide. Not true. Not true. Not true. Not true. Her parents are not. Her parents are not allowed to see yes, the body. body. The parents are not allowed yeah. to see the body for almost. No, Malaj, this is. I'm sorry. I, I, anyway, Malaj, this so is the impression. Our we'll investigation. We'll have to. We'll have, we'll have to place the facts before your lordships. We have investigated that. that. This is not correct. That, uh, so, uh, until late night, we find that no FIR, no FIR was registered. That's also not correct. Right. Not correct. What time was the FIR registered? Malaj, in fact, we did what is called a, what we call call a UD case, Malaj. UD case. Unnatural death case registered. Yes, unnatural death case registered. But immediately. That's right. That's an FIR, Malaj. That's in an fact, FIR. Not the body to discover. UD case can be FIR registered sir. formally in the police. Malaj, inquest was done and then FIR registered immediately and the investigation started. What time should have been done? The FIR registered. Okay. Uh, 12, Malaj. 12. 12.30. Does the FIR say that this is a case of a murder? No. Yes, yes. I no, no, it, it, no, no, Malaj. We, yes. yes. we have some yes. yes. inquest shows it's a case of murder, Malaj. Inquest shows it's a case done. of murder. Inquest, inquest is done. The uh, the post mortem is the autopsy is conducted. Yes. Yes. Now until the night, no FIR indicating that this is a clear case of a murder has been made out. It has, mother. I'm sorry. I'll place those facts before you. It has been, mother. Lord, may I suggest from Lord, unnatural I suggest? death, he registered the case Lord, for murder. Okay. We caught the victim. He is a civic worker, mother. It's an individual. Act. I show all that to your lordship. And that's the first aspect. Yeah. What was the principal doing? Why did he not one? Why was this kind of inaction on the part first an attempt to pass this off as a suicide not instead of a murder? I'm sorry, mother. That's not correct. Not recording, not registering an FIR. Till late in the evening. Third, the body itself is handed over to the parents sometime in the evening for cremation. Fourth, and that's a matter of very serious concern. On the next day, the doctors, the doctors, because they were all doctors working with her, the doctors are on protest. A group of persons, a mob assembles at the hospital. The hospital is invaded. And the critical facilities are damaged in the morning or whenever the the mob enters. What is the police doing? Yes. Not Malaj, we have videos for all. Malaj, let me first of all state. Surely, Mr. Sibal, what? the police. Malaj, Malaj. Yes. A, a very serious offence take, has taken place. The crime scene is within the precincts of the hospital. Now, that is the first thing that the police have to do, namely to protect the crime scene. What are they doing? Well, that's a, they allow, that's allow vandals to enter the hospital? The, it's the impossible that's that 7,000 people first can of all, gather first without of all, the consent. Allow me. 7,000 people can one, never one, gather one, without one, knowledge one, or one, consent of the police. This is not an adversarial litigation. It's not. Therefore, let us not be in allow denial me. mode. One girl has lost it's life it's by not a, only Malod, a sexual pervert, he's an animal. Sir. After the principal resigns from this medical college, he sent to another office. He is appointed as a principal of another college. Another yes, immediately. He doesn't resign. But anyway, be that be that, 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 that at the least his conduct is under scrutiny, and he is appointed as a principal somewhere else. This is all. We have a note on all this missing. It's not separate. It's not separate. For each other, they are equal to order. The reality. Just show it to you. Let the file report not. But we'll just show it to you tomorrow. A couple of things which you would like to do. Well, let's make it very clear. Yeah. We would want the, the the investigation has been handed over to the CBI. Bureau of Investigation. Yes. Done. Yes. We want CBI to file a status report before this court on Thursday. Correct. We will take up the case on Thursday. We want CBI to apprise us on the status of the investigation. Correct. The investigation obviously must be at a very sensitive stage so that it's something which will be submitted to the court. So the court so is not in in the case guide. Public it's case. really an investigation yes, yes. report which will be given to us on Thursday. 
we will uh, consider the status report on Thursday morning and see what yeah. where the investigation is uh, is proceeding. But the reason why I must make it clear, the reason why we decided to take Suomoto cognizance, we are conscious of the fact that the High Court was entertaining a, a petition which was filed by uh, the petitioners who are here before us, is because this is really now not just a matter relating to a particular murder which takes place in a hospital in Kolkata which is horrific in the nature of the crime, but it raises systemic issues in regard to the safety of uh, doctors. Well, two more incidents, one in Bombay and yes. one in Ahmedabad after that, 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 That's the Chief Justice, please. Yes. Uh, it deals with the systemic issue of safety of doctors across the uh, across India. Yes. There are a couple of things, Ms. Sibyl, before we deal with the broader aspects of safety and what we propose to do, we'll, we'll tell you. In a I have something to assist on that, Malak, uh, uh, neutrally. Uh, 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 First, on measures of safety, we are deeply concerned about the fact that there is a virtual absence of safe conditions of work for young doctors across the country, particularly in public hospitals. As we know, these are all young interns. They are residents, senior residents, doctors, and most importantly, women doctors yes. who are subject to of, of graver dangers and vulnerable, yeah, vulnerable. Uh, by virtue of the nature of their uh, of Absolutely. because of gender. And working so, hours. Just and working hours. Uh, most of the young doctors have to put in somewhere 36, 36 hours. hours. Uh, we find that there are no uh, duty rooms available. Yeah. No separate restrooms or duty rooms available for men and women doctors, for the other nursing staff, for the paramedical staff who are also uh, on duty. And therefore, we must uh, evolve a national consensus to ensure that there must be a standard national protocol yes. to ensure that safe conditions of work are provided. This is not a matter of providing protection either to women or protection to doctors in general. It's a matter of creating safe conditions of yes. work so that they Correct. ultimately what is equality under the constitution all about? If women cannot go to a place of work and be safe, then we are denying them the basic conditions of equality. And therefore, we are entertaining this and I'll very shortly share the way we want to uh, proceed with this to ensure that ultimately, uh, it's not that every time that there is a rape or murder that the conscience of the nation is uh, awakened. Second. We have to do something right here and now to ensure that these conditions of safety are uh, maintained in terms of protocols which will not just be on paper, but protocols yes. which will be enforced across, uh, across, across India. Now, in so far as what happened in Kolkata is concerned, a couple of things from what we have, of course, first, let me begin by saying that we are deeply concerned of the fact that the name of uh, the deceased who was assaulted and murdered, the name has been published all over the media. Photographs have been yes. published all over the media. Should video, video clips, obviously, either before or after the postmortem have been published, right. uh, showing her body. Uh, you know, after she was subjected to it, it's extremely uh, concerning. We are, we, we, we are the first to recognize the right to free speech, but there are well-settled parameters. It is extremely painful. I agree entirely with you. Which have been laid down in now the, uh, the, the, the new criminal, the, the, the new criminal procedure court. Yeah. By judgments of our court in Nipun Saxena, that you will not publish the names of the survivors of sexual assault. Correct. In this case, it's a criminal of. We have filed 50 FIRs on that count. 50 FIRs. And it has circulated. Nobody should publish. May I just inform your lordships before the police reached, photos were taken and these were circulated. We didn't allow anything to happen. We cordoned off the area. Is this, we, this is the way we provide dignity and That's respect terrible. the privacy terrible. of uh, an individual who has lost her life? We want CBI to file a status report before this court on Thursday. Correct. We will take up the case on Thursday. We yeah. want CBI to apprise us on the status of the investigation. Correct. The investigation obviously must be at a very sensitive stage so that it's something which would be submitted to the court. To the, for court's so the consumption, not to the case the public case. It's really an investigation update yes, state yes. report which will be given to us on Thursday. We will uh, consider the status report on Thursday morning and see what Fair where on. the investigation is uh, is proceeding. 
today what we intend to do is that today we intend to pass an order uh, what we have done is and here first that's why we were in uh, we were in conversation with each other we have discussed the pros and cons we are setting up under the authority of this court a national task force the national task force will consist of a diverse segment of doctors from different parts of the country we want them to make us recommendations in regard to the modalities to be followed across india we are not only talking of the adhikar medical college and hospital but modalities to be followed all over the country for ensuring safety at the workplace first and foremost for which our young doctors our middle level the middle level doctors the senior doctors are all uh, today on process and on strike at the same time we would now that we are taking charge of these proceedings we are appointing a national task force it's our earnest request to doctors all over the country who have struck work there are institutions where i know appointments are taken two years in advance for instance the all india institute of medical sciences appointments are taken two years in advance if patients lose their slot they go back by another two years sure. so we would really earnestly appeal to all the doctors that we are here to ensure that you know their safety and protection is a matter of the highest national concern and therefore this is something which we would uh, earnestly earnestly appeal to all the young doctors that this is something we stress us that's why we have not left it to just the high court the high court of course consists of very seasoned uh, judges the chief justice was monitoring the investigation by the cbi but we felt that this is now not a matter of a particular uh, offense however serious and horrendous the offenses but something which affects the institution of healthcare pan india manoj i have only one request yeah, sorry not i sorry. i need one not 5 minutes on this one only yeah uh, that's what i said yes who is the first informant we were talking about the first information yes, yes. who is that first oh, informant wow. can you name us please name him who is the first informant we just got the fire the one i just find out for this and we would also like to know the time of the registration of the, the father of the victim man wait a minute please wait please don't don't interfere, don't interfere the please. first ud case was done by the police on its own so that is not an fir what is section 174 of the old crpc today can anyone assist us please yes what so that's just a report yes mr to start the investigation then who lodged the fir 183 was the father of the deceased yes then the vice principal of the hospital first the father of the deceased and vice principal of the hospital so there cannot be two fir ah. no 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 but both who? complaints were sent to us no. both complaints sent to us tell us tell us whose complaint is treated as father 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 of the deceased this is uh, registered at what time yeah that's well 11:45 pm 11:45 pm yeah. now next what day next day, day. Yes, yes yes the night the night the night in the night Next in the day. night in the night in the night, in the Now, night. when is the when is the body when one second when is the body when is the body handed over to the parents for cremation well let's kindly have a this you this note that i have given what time is the body handed over to the parents for cremation one second hmm? around 3:30 30 10 or no. therefore therefore one thing is very clear the body is handed over to the parents for cremation at 8:30 pm the the fir is registered at 11:45 pm 3 hours and 15 minutes after the body is handed over to the parents for cremation they refuse to file well, this is the problem we handed it over they filed the fir they made the complaint at 11:45 they say we are in shock please do whatever you want to do they wanted a post mortem we did the post mortem all is videographed everything is videographed the autopsy and the post mortem take place between 1:45 to 4 pm now between 1:45 and 4 pm yeah. the autopsy takes place followed by the post not the autopsy took place at 6 o'clock not at fair enough that's six. all right we'll take it as one between 1 and 4 o'clock that it doesn't take place in 1 minute it's a it takes that so it takes that was video grand second don't keep on interrupting they wanted so a the, board we, we constituted a board we are proceeding on the basis of mr tibble's hypothesis that the autopsy and the post mortem take place between 1 and 4:45 in the afternoon now, now there is 
You know, the autopsy would reveal that this is a case where a where a doctor has been murdered, where she has been murdered. Yeah. The FIR is registered at eleven forty-five in the night, Mr. Yeah. Sibal. Yeah. And who was expected to register? Yeah. Nobody in the hospital registers the FIR. No. The father registers the. What was the principal? Was the vice principal. What were the authorities in the hospital doing? Look, they wanted a board. We constituted a no, board. No. They wanted a magistrate. We got the magistrate. You don't need to realize that time for registration of FIR. You don't need a medical board for registration of FIR. At the moment, at the, at the moment, Melas, what are we considering? We are considering, Melas, two or three things, as your lordship has put to me. Not done. How did these photographs reach? The social media. That's no, no. That's 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 I'll, leave, I'll mention all this. All the, how did these photographs reach the media? We have nothing to do with no, it. Let us we not trivialize everything. Alert. People there took photographs, let's came in, took photographs, and sent it. Number two, Malaj. Number two, immediately, Malaj. Immediately, an unnatural death case, case Malaj, was started, and an investigation was started. Your losses may be right, Malaj. Why did it happen? But whatever the parents were doing, we were agreeing with that. We set up a board. We asked the magistrate, the a, a, a judicial magistrate, to be present. Everything was videographed. Everything was caught. Mr. Sibal, it is the obligation was made of the authorities of the hospital. Yes. The parents are not present in the hospital when the murder takes place. Yes. It's the obligation of the authorities of the hospital to register an FIR the no, moment they get it was done. 245 done. The letter was sent. 11.45 in the No, no. 2.45 letter was sent. Since then, superintendent sent a letter of, of, at 2.45, Malaz. It not, it's not 11.30. At 2.45 itself, it, that thing, we'll set out all this, Malaz. It's better we set. My Lord, first of all, Lord, let us not trivialize on this side, my Lord, we are dealing with one incident, but your Lordships are rightly looking at a larger picture. But we are dealing with, my Lord, a young doctor, uh, not only raped sex by a sexual pervert or perverts, but who was an animal-like instinct, who had an animal-like instinct, the way, my Lord, the body was handled. Thereafter, my Lord, I don't wish, my Lord, to make this a political issue, I would request the state also not to be in a denial mode. Three hours of the patient, parents waiting, my lord, is something we can experience if we put ourselves in that position. Now, my lord, so far as the safety is concerned, my lord, one thing I must bring to your lordship's notice, my lord, the doctors are genuinely, my lord, have a grievance. They are, my lord, they, they've lost their one of their colleagues, my lord, globally. But, my lord, out of, my lord, all states, 23 states have legislations dealing with my Lord, what is called for my Lord, Kerala, my Lord, uh, so and so medical, Medicare service persons and medical service institutions, prevention of violence and damage or loss to the property act. There are my Lord, I, I'll give my Lord, the list of acts. My Lord, uh, this also the national task force my Lord, can. Uh, uh, go, uh, the punishment which is provided under it's the a cognizable my lord and three years uh, three years, three years. Yeah, yes my lord. it's saying uh, cognizable non billable and punishment is three years my lord this is first i'll my lord place it the national task force my lord which our lordships contemplate mm -hmm. can my lord go into this can even make suggestions and it should be welcome my lord my lord <laughs> second thing my lord which is worrying us is this my lord even in a well-organized function, if we want the presence of 500 people in an auditorium, we all know we have to make efforts. 7,000 people at the middle of the night armed with lathis and hockeys, my Lord, can never be without the knowledge, if not consent, of the police force. It's complete failure of law and order, my Lord, in the entire state. What time did the vandalization of the hospital take place? Lord, midnight. Midnight. It, it's at midnight, my Lord. I thought my learned friend, he doesn't want to politicize the matter, my Lord. Why is he saying all this? Now, now. Let's, now let's, why this is, my Lord, uh, important. We should be called upon. We'll tell you what happened. See, what we propose to do is we'll indicate what the broad parameters of our uh, intervention in this matter uh, consists of. We'll just pronounce it very shortly. For one thing, Mr. Sibyl, we are very, very concerned. Let not the power of the state of West Bengal be unleashed on peaceful protesters. Yes. Yes. I, I give to your, I give, Lord, we have videos, we have videos of all that happened. People who are people, whether they are doctors, civil society, lawyers, people who are protesting, so long as there is no act of destruction. of We have videos. Property. We agree. 
Let there not be the power of the state unleashed. Agree. Peaceful protection. Manas, I agree, Should and that has not happened. No. One second. We have videos which we have placed, which will place before your lordship. And Manas, what happens is political parties get into the act, and this is what happens. People, people who are taking to the media to communicate their views. Yes. Let us deal with them with a great deal of. Sympathy. I agree. I agree. It's a time. It's a time of national catharsis. Look at the girl. Don't be denial. Now, for example, they say pelvic and collarbone was broken. False. Postmortem doesn't not, say that. But not should going to state in the center, they'll so keep the CBI, the CBI is investigating it. Yes. We will ask for a report from the CBI. Now, what we what we propose to do is just one second. Just one second. This must stop. We are, here, we are in charge of the proceeding. We have heard Mr. Solicitor. We have heard Mr. Sibyl. If we start hearing all the interveners, there'll be no end to it. Not Please just, have some patience. We are going to now tell you what we are proposing to do. We are not disposing of the case, but let's allow us to at least pronounce what we intend to do. On 9 August 2024, a 31-year-old postgraduate doctor at R.G. Carr Medical College Hospital, Kolkata, who was in a 36-hour duty shift, was raped and murdered inside the seminar room of the hospital. As horrific details have emerged in the course of media reportage, the brutality of the sexual assault and the nature of the crime have shocked the conscience of the nation. The name and graphic images of the deceased have been widely circulated on social media without regard to her privacy or dignity. Writ petitions were instituted before the Calcutta High Court seeking, among other things, a court-monitored investigation of the crime and the conduct of the hospital authorities, including the role of the principal of the medical colleges, college and other officials by a special team of investigating officers. It has been alleged that the parents of the deceased were initially informed that their daughter had committed suicide. They were permitted to see the dead body after several hours, and a first information report in regard to the murder was registered belatedly by the police after several hours. By its order dated 13 August 2024, the High Court transferred the investigation to the Central Bureau of Investigation. Following the incident, Agitations and protests were called by doctors' associations, student bodies, and civic groups across the country. On the eve of Independence Day, several areas in Kolkata saw protests spurred by the Reclaim the Night campaign. At 12.30 a.m. on 15 August, when a protest was underway at the hospital, a large mob assembled at the premises of the R.G. Carr Medical College Hospital and vandalized the emergency ward and other departments of the hospital. Following the acts of wanton disruption and vandalism, the Indian Medical Association, a private and voluntary organization of doctors in India, called for a nationwide withdrawal of medical services, except med emergency services, for 24 hours on 17 August 2024. In the aftermath of the brutal incident and the demonstration which followed, the state government was expected to ensure the deployment of the state machinery to prevent a breach of law and order, it was all the more necessary to do so, since investigation of the crime which took place in the precincts of the hospital was underway. We are unable to comprehend how the state was not prepared to deal with the incident of vandalization of the premises of the hospital. Nationwide protests following the brutal incident in the Arjikar Medical College Hospital have brought the issue of the lack of institutional safety for doctors to the forefront. Medical associations have consistently raised issues of the lack of workplace safety in healthcare institutions. Medical professionals, in the performance of their duties, have been unfortunate targets of various forms of violence. Hospitals and medical care facilities are open throughout the day and night. Medical professionals, doctors, nurses, and paramedic staff work round the clock. Unrestricted access to every part of healthcare institutions has made healthcare professionals susceptible to violence. Patients of relatives in anguish are quick to attribute untoward results to the negligence of medical professionals. Such allegations are immediately followed by violence against medical professionals. In May 2024, two on-duty doctors were allegedly attacked by relatives of a patient who died during treatment in a hospital in West Bengal. In another incident in May 2024 in Bihar, Following the death of a 25-year-old pregnant patient, a nurse was allegedly pushed off the first floor of the building by the kin of the patient. In August 2024, a final-year resident in a hospital in Hyderabad, 
was allegedly assaulted by a patient's attendants after the patient died due to medical condition. These incidents of violence are a few among the many that have been unleashed against members of the medical community in the recent past. They are portents of a systemic failure to protect doctors, nurses, and paramedical staff in the confines of hospitals. With few or no protective systems to ensure their safety, medical professionals have become vulnerable to violence. With the involvement of systemic issues for healthcare across the nation, this court has had to intervene. Women are at particular risk of sexual and non-sexual violence in these settings. Due to ingrained patriarchal attitudes and biases, relatives of patients are more likely to challenge women medical professionals. In addition to this, female medical professionals also face different forms of sexual violence at the workplace by colleagues, seniors, and persons in authority. Sexual violence has had its origins even within the institution, the case of Aruna Shanbagh being a case in point. There is a hierarchy within medical colleges and the career advancement and academic degrees of young professionals are capable of being affected by those in the upper echelons. The lack of institutional safety norms at medical establishments against both violence and sexual violence against medical professionals is a matter of serious concern. While gendered violence is a source of more malevolent manifestations of the structural deficiencies in public health institutions, the lack of safety is of concern to all medical professionals. Preserving safe conditions of work is central to realizing equality of opportunity to every working professional. This is not, a just, this is not just a matter of protecting doctors. Their safety and well-being as health providers is a matter of national interest. As more and more women join the workforce in cutting-edge areas of knowledge and science, the nation has a vital stake in ensuring safe and dignified conditions of work. The constitutional value of equality demands nothing else and will not brook compromises on the health, well-being, and safety of those who provide health care to others. The nation cannot await another rape or murder for real changes on the ground. Several states, such as Maharashtra, Kerala, Karnataka, Telangana, West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh, and Tamil Nadu, have enacted legislation to protect healthcare service professionals from violence and damage to property. All these enactments prohibit any act of violence against medical professionals. The offense is non-bailable and punishable with three years of imprisonment. However, these enactments do not address the institutional and systemic causes that underlie the problem. An enhanced punishment without improving institutional safety standards falls short of addressing the problem effectively. We have attempted to flag here the ground reality indicating the lack of institutional safety standards in healthcare institutions. A non-exhaustive formulation is set out below. A. Medical professionals who are posted for night duties are not provided adequate resting spaces. More often, doctors rest in the patient's room or in available public spaces. Duty rooms are scanned. Separate duty rooms for male and female medical professionals are conspicuous by their absence in most healthcare establishments. B. Interns, residents, and senior residents are made to perform 36-hour shifts and conditions where even basic needs of sanitation, nutrition, hygiene, and rest are lacking. There is an absence of uniformity in terms of a standard national protocol. The fear of retribution prevents most healthcare professionals from questioning the absence of facilities for basic well-being. C. Lack of security personnel in medical care units is more of a norm than an exception. More often than not, medical professionals, which includes young resident doctors, interns, and nurses, are left to handle unruly attenders. Open access to healthcare facilities leaves medical professionals vulnerable to undesirable elements. D. Medical care facilities do not have sufficient toilet facilities. Most often, there is only one common toilet for medical professionals in one department. E. The hostels or places of stay for medical professionals are situated far from the hospital. Doctors and nurses who have to travel to and from the hospital are not provided transport facilities by the institution. Even within the precincts of the sprawling spaces of public hospitals, there is either inadequate or no transportation facilities for the safe commute of professionals. F. There is an absence or lack of properly functioning CCTV cameras to monitor ingress and egress to the hospital 
and to control access to sensitive areas. G. The patients and their attenders have unrestricted access to all places within the hospital, including intensive care units and the doctor's resting rooms. H. Lack of screening for arms and weapons at the entrance of hospitals. I. Dingy and illit places within the hospitals. J. Medical professionals have to shoulder the responsibility of being both medical and emotional caregivers to patients and their relatives. There are no supportive facilities and no training and communication skills. And K. Certain spaces within hospitals, such as the intensive care unit and the emergency wards, are prone to a greater risk of violence because of the severity of medical conditions of patients in these departments. We have in this backdrop formed the view that a national consensus must be evolved after due consultation with all stakeholders on the urgent need to formulate protocols governing the issues which this order has highlighted. We have attempted to compose for this purpose a diverse body of persons with experience in healthcare institutions. A national task force with the following members of the medical profession is hence constituted. 1. Surgeon Vice Admiral Arti Sarian, AVSM, VSM, Director General Medical Services, Navy. 2. Dr. D. Nageshwar Reddy, Chairman and Managing Director, Asian Institute of Gastroenterology and AIG Hospitals, Hyderabad. 3. Dr. M. Srinivas, Director, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Ames, Delhi. 4. Dr. Pratima Murthy, Director, National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Nimhans, Bangalore. E. Dr. Govardhan Dattpuri, Executive Director, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Jodhpur. 5. Dr. Uh, sorry, 6. Dr. Somitra Rawat, Chairperson, Institute of Surgical Gastroenterology, GI and HPB Oncosurgery and Liver Transplantation and Member Board of Management, Sir Gangaram Hospital, New Delhi, and Member Court of Examiners of the Royal College of Surgeons, England. 8. Professor Anita Saxena, Vice Chancellor, Pandit B.D. Sharma Medical University, Rohtak, formerly Dean of Academics, Chief Cardiothoracic Center and Head Cardiology Department at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Delhi. 9. Dr. Pallavi Saple, Dean Grant Medical College and Sir JJ Group of Hospitals, Mumbai. And 10. Dr. Padma Srivastav, former professor at the Department of Neurology, Ames, Delhi, currently serving as the chairperson of neurology at Paris Health Gurugram. The following shall be the ex officio members of the NTF A. The Cabinet Secretary to the Government of India. B. The Home Secretary to the Government of India. C. The Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. D. Chairperson of the National Medical Commission. And E. President of the National Board of Examiners. Examination, sorry. The NTF shall formulate effective recommendations to remedy the issues of concern pertaining to safety, working conditions, and well being of medical professionals and other cognate matters highlighted in the above segments of this order. The NTF shall, while doing so, consider the following aspects to prepare an action plan. The action plan may be categorized under two heads. One, preventing violence, including gender-based violence against medical professionals. And two, providing an enforceable national protocol for dignified and safe working conditions for interns, residents, senior residents, doctors, nurses, and all medical professionals. One, Prevention of violence against medical professionals and providing safe working conditions. A. Ensuring due security in medical establishments. 1. Triaging departments and places within the hospital based on the degree of volatility and the possibility of violence. Areas such as emergency rooms and intensive care units are prone to a greater degree of violence and may possibly need additional security in place to deal with any untoward incident. Two. A baggage and person screening system at every entrance of the hospital to ensure that arms are not carried inside the medical establishment. 3. Preventing intoxicated persons from entering the premises of the medical establishment unless they are patients. And 4. Training security personnel employed at hospitals to manage crowds and grieving persons. B. Infrastructural development. 1. Provision of separate resting rooms and duty rooms in each department for A, male doctors, B, female doctors, C, male nurses, D, female nurses, and E, a gender-neutral common resting space. The room must be well ventilated, have sufficient bed spaces, 
and provide a facility for drinking water. Access to these rooms must be restricted through installation of security devices. Two, adopting appropriate technological intervention to regulate access to critical and sensitive areas, including through the use of biometric and facial recognition. Three, ensuring adequate lighting at all places in the hospital. And if it is a place, if it is a hospital attached to a medical college, all places within the campus. Four, installation of CCTV cameras at all entrance and exit points of the hospitals and the corridors leading up to all patient rooms. And five, if the hostels or rooms of the medical professionals are away from the hospital, provision of transport between 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. for those who wish to travel to or from their place of stay to the hospital. C, employment of social worker, workers trained in grief and crisis counseling at all medical establishments. D, conducting workshops for all employees of medical establishments, including doctors, nurses, and helpers on handling grief and crisis. E, constitution of employees safety committees composed of doctors, interns, residents, and nurses at every medical establishment to conduct quarterly audits on institutional safety measures. F, including additional requirements on institutional safety measures for medical professionals as a criteria for accreditation of healthcare establishments by the National Accreditation Board for Hospitals and Healthcare Providers. And G, the possibility of establishing police posts in medical facilities commensurate with the footfall, bed strength, and facilities. Two. Prevention of sexual violence against medical professionals. A. The Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Prevention, Prohibition and Redress Act 2013 applies to hospitals and nursing homes, including private health care providers. In terms of the provisions of the Act, an Internal Complaints Committee must be constituted in all hospitals and nursing homes. B. The duties of an employer listed under Section 19 of the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Act 2013 which includes organizing sensitization programs and providing a safe working space must be discharged. And C, ensuring for every medical institution a helpline number for medical professionals, which is open 24-7 and emergency distress facilities. It is clarified that the phrase medical professionals used in this judgment encompasses every medical professional, including doctors, medical students who are undergoing the compulsory rotating medical internship as a part of the MBBS court, resident doctors and senior resident doctors and nurses, including those who are nursing interns. The phrases medical establishments, hospital, medical institutions are interchangeably used. The NTF shall be at liberty to make recommendation on all aspects of the action plan highlighted above and any other aspects which, are, which the members seek to cover. They are at liberty to make additional suggestions where appropriate. The NTF shall also suggest appropriate timelines by which the recommendations could be implemented based on the existing facilities and hospitals. The NTF is required to consult all stakeholders, bearing in mind the gravity and urgency of the situation. We have included the heads of the National Medical Commission and the National Board of Examinations as ex officio members of the NTF, bearing in mind the national concerns which have been raised over the issue and the high priority which must be given to the creation of safe working conditions in healthcare institutions. We request the Cabinet Secretary to the Union Government to associate with the work of the NTF. The Home Secretary of the Union Government has also been made a member of the NTF in order to facilitate proper coordination with the state governments. The Secretary to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare of the Government of India will be the member secretary of the NTF. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare will provide all logistical support, including making arrangements for travel, stay, and secretarial assistance, and bear the expenses of the members of the NTF. The NTF is required to submit, is requested to submit an interim report within three weeks and the final report within two months from the date of this order. All state governments and union territory governments through their secretaries in the ministries of health and family welfare and the central government through the Secretary Union Ministry of Health and Family Welfare must collate information from all hospitals run by the state and by the central government respectively on the following aspects. A. How many security personnel are employed at each hospital and each department? B. Whether there is a baggage and person screening mechanism in place at the entrance of the medical establishment. C. The total number of resting stroke duty rooms in the hospital and specific details of the number in each department. D. The facilities provided in the resting stroke duty rooms. E. Information on whether all areas of the hospital are accessible to the general public and if so, with or without any security restrictions. F. Whether there are CCTV cameras in the hospital. If there are, how many and in which locations? G. 
whether the institution provides medical professionals training to appropriately handle the grief of patients. If so, the details of the training must be provided. H, whether social workers who specialize in handling grief of families of the patients are employed at the hospital. If so, then total number of social workers must be provided. I, whether there are police outposts within the premises of the hospital or the medical college hospital campus. J, whether an internal complaints committee in terms of the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Act 2013 has been constituted. And K, whether the employer of the establishment has discharged the duties prescribed by Section 19 of the Act of 2013. If so, the details of it. The data submitted shall be tabulated and filed with an affidavit by the union government within one month from this order. The Central Bureau of Investigation shall submit a status report to this court by, we'll say 22nd, not 23rd, by 22, 20, by 22nd August 2024, on the progress in the investigation of the crime at RG Carr Medical College Hospital, the state of West Bengal shall also file a status report by 23, 22 August 2024 on the progress of the investigation on the acts of vandalism which took place at the hospital in the aftermath of the incident. The matter will now be listed on 23 on 22 august 2020 i'm talking about the women doctors of the place where the incident has happened now lordships it's very important i'm sorry for lordships uh, insisting okay. over and over again but lordships i think it's of some importance in the matter so lordships the day on 14th august night the day the attack took place on the doctors the, when the protesters were on the site the same hoodlums, they went to the hostel. They actually threatened the lady resident doctors. And they were threatened with the kind of threat that's given to women every time they protest. And lordships, very harsh things were, to, and they were threatened with very harsh causing consequences. Now, lordships, now the women doctors subject to, this is what I've been instructed by an association of doctors in West Bengal, and they are in touch with the resident doctors. They said that the women's hostel, most of the women, they've been called back by their parents because they're not feeling safe. So your lordships, when your lordships say they should join this, and because on that very date, the police, the state police, they ran away from the scene. Lordships, it's widely reported. Lordship I don't need to emphasize. Just let me, in anyway, let me Lordship, I'm not making it political. It, it, it's Malada. He's appearing for the doctors. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Lordship. So what happened is after, yeah. So what happened, the police just left them and they were actually, the police hid in the changing room of the nurses. This is what the doctors told me, Lordship. Now, if I am, this is not, a, I don't want to be caught between the political ba battle of these two sides. Now, the, there is no political battle. I, let me just explain. So what I'm just for the students and the doctors practicing the association of doctors. In fact, one doctor, a very brave doctor, I don't want to take the gender. So it gave a representation to the police. So a lot of people have given a representation of the police. They have asked me to forward it to your lordships in sealed envelope. I have three copies of the representation. Lordships may just have a look to see what is the position of the doctors there. Lord, I can my make it clear, my Lord, we do form. not make this political, but we also receive, my Lord, complaints. This is the hard reality on ground. My learned friend is not keeping mum for no reason. What is all this going on? I'm not keeping mum for no reason. Therefore, he's not sharing I mean, I anything with the CBI. What my, we've given the entire case diary. What more do you want? No. Is this hostel a part of the hospital or it is at a far off place? No, so within the campus. The campus. Yes, but I was told that one set went to the hospital when they ransacked. Some goons, they went to the hostel. Ladies hostel and then the uh, lady doctor's hostel and male doctor's hostel, they are all different. Uh, I, I assume so, Lordship, because they said that one set... Okay. How many doctors, intern doctors are there in the hostel today? 
Not chips. I am told. How many were actually? I am told ninety percent of the women doctors are not there. In right? numbers, how many? How were many there? were there how in the hospital? How many were there, and how many have left now? Lord Ships, may I just take the information? Ask someone right now. Just who knows about it. I'll Mr. Sibyl, this is very serious. Very serious, of course. Because no doubt about it. What is the police? What is the police? No, no, I agree, Malad. So it's tip of an iceberg, Malad. I don't wish to. That is why FIRs it. have been registered. We'll take strong action. Photo, we have got from the CCTVs, photos have been. From the CCTVs, photos have been identified and we have lodged FIRs, Malad, and we are taking. Those people have been arrested. 37 people have been arrested. But, Sibyl, arrest is another thing. Yeah. Obviously, there were protests of the doctors. Yes, yes, of course. This was, this was part of the wider protests which were going yes, on that yes, night. Absolutely. It was absolutely. called Reclaim the Night. Yes, yes. The West Bengal government could not have been unaware of the fact that when there are no. protests across the country, there's always another segment which will try and disrupt this. What? These are women who, they, the women doctors are assaulted. The police run away from the scene. Thereafter, the women doctors are called out by name, namely the people who are leading their protest, and they were threatened with the same fate that has befallen the others. Well, if they tell, tell us, we'll take strong action. Well, I agree. But, I'm not, not disputing. You are supposed to be well, aware. Well, hold on. My Lord is, what was, is asking me. What, let me respond. What was the police, what what was the police force doing what, in anticipation? What happened was there were 150. The, there were 100. Hold on. Allow me. Mr. Sitter, don't, sir, I don't, don't, please don't interrupt, Mr. Sitter. Yes, we are putting a point to him. And, and but, as I said, mothers, we want we are on the same side in this, mothers. Now there were 150 policemen. Mother, what happened was that out, out, outside the hospital itself, 150 in anticipation, 150 policemen. But mothers, what happened was 7,000 people came. By the time we caught additional force, which came later, this vandalism took place. This is what happened. You seven thousand. We picked them up. We picked what them up from there, mother. No. It, it doesn't appear that seven thousand people vandalized the place. No, they didn't. I didn't say that. Then because by the time eighty to ninety people maximum, maximum. they no. indulged in vandalism. We have the video. We have the video. We show it. There is no issue on that. And facts so, can't be mothers distorted. Did the police run away from the site? No, no, that can't be mothers. I will find out. It's How can the police run away? Police not no knowing police run away. Mothers, I, these allegations, if you impossible. take them mothers as face value, impossible, then we have a problem. We have a video. I show it to you. Sibyl, we don't can we show you the video? We, we have to send disclose. them for vendors. We don't want to disclose the name or even the designation of the person who has written it. But please rest assured that this is not an ordinary complaint which has been no, no, I agree, has been submitted. I agree. Mother, see the video. We'll show. No, we please do not disclose. He or she will we meet with the it. same fate. Police caused the protesting doctors threatening them. Can Just see, Mother. We've got can the can video. It's it's can pen drive also. We can give it to you. There's a pen drive. We can give you the pen drive. Mr. Sibyl, this email was sent on 19th of August by this particular doctor to the Just give it. ID of the Kolkata police. Your ships have been sent. Yes. At 22 hours. Yesterday, Malad. Yes, but therefore, but what is, tell us one thing. What is, what is the police doing? What is it was sent yesterday. We are taking action. We have taken action. And see, how video, you know, Malad. Which, 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 which doctor, doctor which mail, how do you know what that it is or yesterday? Malad, see, the, see the video, Malad. It's better. One, 150 or so, uh, police officers were camping outside. Can you see the video, Malad? Sir, Mr. Sibyl. Well, I am not here to defend anybody. Mr. Please Mr. make it rest assured, Mr. Look at it from a different angle. Yes. You made a fervent appeal to these doctors. Yes. Please join your duty. Correct. The marginalized section of the society is suffering. Absolutely. They can't afford to go to. I agree society. entirely. Now, these doctors, the lady doctors who are in the hospital, even if we ask the government to provide them with police protection, this police is going to protect No, no, Malas, we'll make sure. That is our previous So, at the, at the RG Kar Medical College in hospital, because obviously the women doctors have left for the reason that they are fearful of their safety. If the premises of this hospital have to be safeguarded for these doctors to resume duty, who is going to provide security at the premises? Well, as we will. We give an undertaking to this court. CISF security. We'll give, a one, we'll give an undertaking to this court. We'll find, give an undertaking. Let it be CISF. 
what we suggest is this because if conditions return to normal we'll put additional if conditions return to normal at this hospital yes and doctors start coming back this will have an impact on the rest of the of course of yes. course therefore why does we'll we propose that let the cis provide security at yes. the nicest yes. hospital and exactly. and one, more, one more thing i have no problems with that but one, one more thing one more thing idea is now, that now their that. security is paramount so please yes. if your lordship want lord now one more my lord i am inviting this order the person who has complained my lord we do not know but the state possibly knows they say that the email was received at 22 let that person be given special security by the cisf hmm? now the no, state yes, knows no. about the no, we will do it they don't want to feel that i don't you can't say but the state police is incapable of all this 100 Here the matter of lordship, even five complaints have gone. Many, did you get the figure? Yes, your lordship. So yes. there are seven residents, seven hundred residents, two fifty ladies, and only hundred are there now. Two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty to forty female. Then fifty have left. Yes, One yes your lordship. Approximately thirty. Thirty to forty female residents and sixty to seventy male residents remain. Remain. Everybody else has gone. Thirty two. Lordships, I am told thirty to forty female residents and sixty to seventy male residents remain. Rest have all fled. And two, Lord, we have this information. Total seven hundred. Lord, when I destroyed. Lord, when I said there is no law and order, it's a political statement. We have this information and more.